I'm here now with ex-Olympian Steve Cram. Steve, it's great to see you here, but tell us, why are you here? Well, I'm here with uh, Atos, who uh, obviously are, I guess, a partner within this whole industry around IT um, support, um, and particularly they're one of their um, companies, Red Spot and Hanky, which is, you know, looking at obviously hotel, train, travel, the whole part of what a, you know, a lot of people here are interested in, making it a bit easier to get to your customer and get them to book with you, etc. Um, and Atos are one of the Olympic sponsors. Um, who provide all the IT infrastructure at the Olympic Games for whether you're a competitor, want to know how to get your result quickly, um, or a member of the media, um, all of the support that we have from the information systems that commentators and presenters and people who write for newspapers, etc. Every, everybody uses and, and relies on fast delivery of that information in a reliable way. So um, I've been working with Atos for a few years uh, in that area. Obviously, there's a lot of hoteliers here today, and with the Olympics coming up, how do you say that's going to benefit the hotel industry? Well, you know, there's been a, a lot of uh, different figures bandied around, um, around how much it's going to mean to the British economy, not just you know, the, the cost of building the games is what people tend to focus on, but actually there's been a massive impact already um, in British industry. A lot of it has been around construction, and the next bit of it really is about suppliers, some of whom are here. Um, I know in, just in the northeast, there's been about 80 million pounds of contracts have been awarded to businesses in the northeast. So the next bit, if you like, is now these people. You know, when, when the infrastructure is now in place, it's about how do we maximise people are coming from all over the world, whether they're spectators, members of the media, athletes, etc. Um, and they want to not only see London, they want to go out into the UK. They've got time on their hands. They'll be staying in hotels. They'll be going to restaurants, etc. Um, and you know, I've heard some people kind of say, no, it isn't going to be a very good time for the business in the UK. I think it is um, a great opportunity. It's a great chance, not only for you know, the three, four weeks that people are here, they're going to come back. I've been back to China because of the experience I had in Beijing. So you know, hopefully if you give them a good experience, um, you'll catch their trade for years to come. So you think this is going to be a big boost for British tourism? Yeah, I know Visit Britain have been a, you know, a big... Claire in, in working with Low Cog on, on trying to make sure that people who come here, even if they're from the UK as well, you know, it's showing them where you can do a quick day trip. You know, you can get up the way I live in the northeast very quickly on the train. Um, if you've got a day spare while you're at the Olympics, just getting out and seeing what Britain has to offer. And yeah, we're welcoming the world. You know, we want to make sure that we do that in a very positive way. And why do you think groups like Beacon are important to hoteliers at this time? Well, people who travel are, are quite discerning now these days about the choices and the options that are open to them, and they're always going to be looking for really good deals. You know, I stay, on average, at least half of the year in hotels around the world and in the UK, and I'm looking for deals. You know, I'm working sometimes with BBC, I might be work on my own, I might be travelling um, with athletes, etc. And you know, those associations that get built are important because you've, you've got to get as much as many advantages if you like over your competitors you know there's a plenty of choice out there particularly in the travel industry and it's not easy and you've you've got to stand out and sometimes it's not so easy to do that on your own and i think you know in sport we always talk about working with good partners um, to enable you to get the success that you want surrounding yourself with people who know what they're doing and are able to offer you a little bit of an advantage over your competitor so what do you think Britain's chances are at the Olympics? We're going to do very well. Um, it's a bit of a well-kept secret you know, in Britain. We tend to concentrate on football and rugby and cricket. And, um, you know, we've had the biggest success in the last three Olympic Games <clears throat> in terms of change than any other country. We were 36th in the 1996 Olympic Games and we were fourth in Beijing. And it's been a massive change. 2012 has helped that, it's provided us with a bit of a catalyst, something to aim for. So yes, we're going to be very successful. We probably, we're not going to beat USA and China and probably Russia, but we want to beat everybody else. And we probably, you know, we want to try and make sure we have our most successful games ever, which I would imagine will be probably in excess of 50 medals in total, probably around 20 gold medals, so plenty to cheer. Any particular names that are looking promising? Yeah, in athletics, you know, I'm, we really want a couple of, it's, the, it's the, the, the hub event, if you like, of the Olympics, so we, we really want some success. So Jess Ennis, 
has got to bounce back. You know, she was um, got beaten at this last year's World Championships. Mo Farah, though, who won the World Championship 10, uh, 5,000, 10,000 is probably his best event, so he's on track looking really good. Um, then you've got people like Philip Sadoru, former world champion, and lots of others just starting to come through. You know, there's a young girl called Holly Bleasdale, people won't have heard of her in the pole vault. She's suddenly, here in January, gone to the top of the world rankings all of a sudden. Um, best time to do it in Olympic year. So there'll be some surprises, but I think in athletics, six to eight medals, a couple of gold medals would be fantastic. And being a former Olympian, what would it have meant to you to be able to compete in your homeland? I would have loved to have competed here. You know, I'm really jealous. I've, I've got a great seat in the house and we sit sitting there commentating. And it's a good second best, but it is second best. I'd rather be out there on the track. I think some people talk about the pressure that the, the you know, people compete for Great Britain will be under, but that's, it's a real positive pressure. And I think to be able to walk out into any of the arenas, cycling, swimming, athletics, and have all of that support behind you must be phenomenal. Um, I had a Commonwealth Games in Edinburgh and just sort of sampled it in a small way. The Olympics is a much bigger thing. So I think a lot of British athletes are going to rise to the occasion because of that. Thanks very much, Steve. Enjoy your day and the Olympics.